welcome to Expedition Networking, a special segment of the Networking RX podcast. I'm Frank Egan, founder and president of Amspirit Business Connections and your host for this program. For those of you who are familiar, on the Networking RX podcast, we share information and have conversations with experts, such as authors, researchers, and social scientists. And all of these programs are aimed at helping you learn how to become better at building professional relationships and understanding why they work. In this Expedition Networking segment, however, we're going to bring on successful entrepreneurs and unique professionals and explore their networking adventure and learn how they used relationships to create lasting success. Today on Expedition Networking, we have Mark Johnson. Mark has over 25 years of experience as a founder, speaker, trainer, and coach with small businesses, large corporations, and governments as well. Uh, He's worked with businesses and governmental agencies uh, really across the world, United States, Australia, Argentina, uh, and Canada, where he's coming to us from. Um, Through these experiences, it's created a vast and varied skill set and created an enormous amount of Uh, invaluable and transferable skills that he can bring to his clients and the talks that he gives. Uh, He has an authentic and friendly approach to coaching, and uh, he's made dramatic changes in his own life and supports others in moving forward in their lives and businesses. So, Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Frank. From uh, sunny Calgary, Alberta. uh, you're, You're quite a ways up there. Yes, we are. Yeah, we, I, I think the, and I've told this story when you know you and I first met. Uh, you had indicated it was forty below, and the question was, "Well, is that Celsius or Fahrenheit?" And you pretty much said, "Doesn't matter. That's where they meet." So uh, yeah. that was that was a little bit of trivia that most people I talk to don't realize. So um, I yeah, appreciate the education. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it's just one of those strange things that. People don't know, but it's true. So when people say, oh, it's minus two. Well, that's a completely different thing in Chicago, too. Right. Here in the yeah. Well, Mark, um, I guess give us a little history. Um, you know, you've got this uh, this company, Success Innovations, and uh, um, but you have a storied background. And I want to kind of get into that and how uh, how that plays into today. And, and people you've met along the way that have helped you and so on and so forth. Sure. Um, so I started out in the oil and gas world. Uh, our, the first comp- the big first big company we built was a pipeline integrity company. And I always said that, you know, our tagline was we keep your pipelines out of the headlines. Okay, good. That was, and that's what we did. We went around the world and, and helped oil and gas operators uh, maintain the integrity of their pipelines. Um, and I guess that's where I first realized how important networking was and going to some of the big conventions, like go to Houston, go to the George R. Brown Center, and you know there'd be 3,000 representatives from different oil and gas companies. And it was getting to know these people and, and sharing you know, what we do and, and then connecting those people maybe with others that had similar stories or similar problems that we could help each other with. Right. Okay. Uh, how does this uh, lead to your, your coaching business? Well, we built and sold two companies, one here in, based here in Canada, one based in Houston. Um, and we learned a lot of lessons. Hard um, lessons or just uh, oh, yes, some very some very very hard lessons. Okay, and that after the second sale, uh, I said, well, "Okay, well, how can I take this knowledge and go and help others?" Because what we've ran into some of the hiccups, the road bumps, uh, the giant potholes aren't just in our industry; they're in every industry and. One, it was during the last settle of the last company. Um, we were relying on our CFO to do a lot of the negotiation in selling the second company. And it was in that experience that I learned you really got to watch what your CFO agrees to in sale contracts because 
we've all heard of a non-compete, meaning you don't, you sold your business, you don't go start a new one. Right. One that got us was a performance guarantee, a three-year performance guarantee that the company was going to perform as good or better financially as it had in the previous couple of years. And that meant if we didn't all stay on and keep the company going and keep it performing the way it was, all right. our payout was zero. Oh, that seems like a formula for disaster. It, well, it certainly does. And we were fortunate that um, the markets and everything else played nice with us and we were able to do that. But I know for myself, I walked away from the equity, my equity share in that particular company because of the, because of that performance guarantee and some other things that were going on in my world. But do you trust what, what your CFO is doing? Is everything in place? Are you guys all on the same page? Right. Because his performance, he wasn't tied to the performance guarantee. Right. He got his money regardless. It was the rest of us that were being tied to this performance guarantee. So from that lesson and many of the others that we learned, um, and a big one is, is building a team around you, right? Of They're all on the same mission, right? And that's so important that a lot of people, well, I'm going to hire Bob or I'm going to hire Mary, but they're just looking for a job. They're not invested in the mission and what you're building. Right. Our, the first company, it took us 13 years from conception to sale. The second company took us four because we all had the same mission. And that was to build a profitable company that we could sell. Gotcha. Okay. And we were all, this is what we're doing. And that made a big difference in how we performed, but also how we, how we built now, was that an insight that you had at some point or looking back, you just, hey, we've got to do this differently or, wow, we did this differently? Yeah, no, it was, we have to do this differently um, because of some of the, you know, because when we started the second company, it was uh, five of us from the first company. And we said, okay, well, looking back, this is what worked well. This is what didn't work. Right. So what works well, we'll use it. We'll take what didn't work and look at the other side of that. What else can we do? How else can we do this and implement that in the new one? And that there was a few things like really treating our employees like they mattered, like they weren't mm-hmm. just a number. Um, so, for example, uh, because of oil and gas, you're working all over the country. And we had a couple of guys that were from Tennessee home base for the company was Houston, Conroe, just north of Houston. Um, And we said, instead of having our guys drive from, say, Oklahoma City back to Houston for a week off or whatever they were getting, and then fly home to Tennessee, well, why not just take your truck, go to Oklahoma City OKC airport, get on a plane there, fly home to Tennessee? Right. It saves saves a day of, day of driving each way, yep. and it makes your people feel like they really matter to you because you're saying, "Hey, go home for a week. Just go to the airport, jump on a plane, and fly home." Right. right. Rather than all the other stuff. So that 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 made a big difference. I know it did. No, oh, I'm sure it did. Um, it sounds like you had a better pool of people. I mean, how we treat people is important, but having have, having the right people is important. How did you set about finding the right people? Because a lot of times that's a, you don't know what you got until you, you know, until they're there. Right. And, and in business, a lot of people talk about, and we've all heard this, well, you got to know your client avatar. You have to know who that client is. Well, we looked at it. We need to know who that employee is, right? What characteristics do they have? Have that are going to make them a good employee for us. And it's not about degrees, right? right? It's not about, oh, he's got a master's and he's got a PhD. It's what are their interests? What, what are their values? And where does that, 
intersect with what we're trying to build, right? And part of that was getting, telling them what our mission was at the start and having a code of honor in place where, we, you know, these are the rules and these are the rules we all play by. Now, were, did, were they all equity? Did they all have an equity stake? Uh, no, okay. they didn't. Most of the employees did not have an equity stake at all. Okay. So that was, it wasn't, uh, but it was about valuing the employees and having them value the company because a lot of companies make the mistake of, um, oh, we're doing this publicly, but privately we do something very differently. Right. And they forget that their biggest and best marketing is their employees because they go and tell everybody they know about either how well they're being treated or how poorly they're being treated. Yeah. And people forget that. And I, there's a, a large international brand right now that is taking a lot of flack for something they've just done. And that's going to impact them. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's, people tend to share the bad stuff more than they share the good stuff. Oh, it's almost, yeah. The good stuff is almost expected. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the smallest bad thing. And that's just human nature, right? We kind of hang on to the negative. So you've sold the second company and then that just kind of led you into the coaching business saying, you know, I've got this, yes. this skill set. Yeah. And, and, you know, there was some study with um, mentors and, and that since, and it continues. Um, but how do you, but that was my goal was, looking at small business and saying, how do we make you guys survive? Because they're the backbone of every economy. Yeah. Right. And it's the, it's the little guys that uh, get forgotten a lot of times. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so how do you, how do you help them? And a lot of them don't know what they don't know. Right. And that hurts them. Right. So recently uh, I was talking with a friend in the U.S. and they wanted to, to start a company. And I said, OK, great. You know, get your LLC set up, whatever. And they're like, oh, my accountant's going to do that for me. And I said, whoa, stop the bus. You don't want your accountant setting up your corporation. Right. You need to go find a lawyer that does this. And I recommended um, a guy that I know that does it properly. Mm -hmm. right? because it's not a, and, th and this goes back to networking. Who do you know that you can refer people to, right? And the fellow I sent him to was uh, Garrett Sutton, who's a good friend of uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad. Uh, but how do you set up a company that's one, not going to cost you a fortune to set it up, but how do you set it up so that all the legal ramifications are covered down right. the road? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, no. Especially in the U.S. now, um, the the courts are piercing LLCs because they're not set up properly. So while you think you're protected, you're not because it wasn't done properly. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's things like that that um, small businesses, even after you're established, you can fix a lot of it if you talk to the right people. Right. Yeah, I I, I totally agree. Um, so I guess. You had indicated before we hit record that you had a environmental sciences background or environmental sciences degree that led you into the pipeline work. It did. It did. And, and that came from my growing up. I grew up on a dairy farm and kind of understood how important everything, you know, the interrelatedness of everything is. Originally wanted to become a, a forest ranger. That was my. Well, there's a lot, of, a lot of forests in Canada. Yeah, I wanted to be a forest ranger. And when I went to school, uh, that's when I found this environmental science. And I was looking at, oh, well, the future, this is where things are going. So I'm going to, you know, get in front of that rather than behind it. And that's how I uh, ended up with the environmental science degree and doing what it did. Is that what you wanted to be growing up? The, well, you wanted to be a forest ranger, I guess. That, yeah. when, when, when did that start? When I was young. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Like I, I grew up in a dairy farm and kind of figured out early that I didn't want to really be a dairy farmer. Right. Uh, a lot of work, but uh, uh, no, no days off either. I mean, yeah, they, no they've off. got to be milked no matter what. Right. But my dad, he liked to be able to take some time to go fishing and do that kind of thing. So he taught us when we were young, you know, this is what we can do. And I just, I liked being in the forest. So that kind of led me, okay, what jobs are there out there? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could go back in time and talk to young Mark Johnson, somewhere in high school, senior year, you know, I guess Canada is good. You have 13 years in, in school or it's a little different. Yeah. Um, neither here nor there. Um, what kind of advice would you give yourself? I guess it, it'll sound funny, but buy assets. Oh, elaborate on that. So when I was in high school, I was into, like a lot of us, um, muscle cars and motorcycles. Uh, but looking back, I would have bought uh, more silver back then. Okay. I would have bought farmland back then. Uh, just looking at what prices have done, um, I would have bought. So uh, anything that has a that's always going to have a value is what I see as an asset. Right. Right. Rental houses. We own some of those. It's an asset because my tenant pays my mortgage and my taxes and right. all of that. Right. So that that's an asset when you look at it from, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad way of looking at things. Yeah. But that would be the advice I'd give myself is, is buy some silver, buy some farmland, you know, and sit on it. Right. You know, that's at least in U.S. high schools, there's just things that aren't taught. We just aren't aren't taught. I interviewed. Yeah, I interviewed a woman uh, a few days ago and uh, kind of a financial coach. And uh, we had we had this very conversation. The difference between the haves and the have nots is just a little bit of information. Um, yeah. It's really what it boils down to. Really what it, and it's, you know, um, well, let's switch gears. Let's talk about success innovations, you know, types of things you're doing, types of people you're looking to meet, types of people you want to work with, um, how to get a hold of you, just the, the yeah. basics. The basics. So the people I like to work with are people that are making, they're not in it just for the money. Well, the money's important. It's what are we building? And it's got to be building something that's more important, right? Something that benefits them, their employees, but also benefits their community and, and hopefully benefits the world on a, on a larger level. It's not just a, I'm in it to make a million bucks or pick your number. Right. Uh, what do I help them with? Um, and this sounds funny, but mindset, because a lot of people's mindset, especially over the last year, has taken a real kicking. Um, what I call SOP, so standard operating procedures, in that we do the same thing all the time. And that was part of our success in our, in our integrity companies, was we adopted the scientific methodology to pipeline in that we looked at the layers and do everything the exact same time because then we can take the data from here and look at it, compare it to the data from there. And right. it means something. so in your small business, do you do the same thing all the time or some of the time? Or are you right. just making it up as you go? Because if you're making it up as you go, that's where you're going to impact your customer because they never know what they're going to get. So right. you get, you know, part of the success of McDonald's is they've got systems in place. Right. The McDonald's burger everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. Yeah. Canada, the US, Argentina, Australia, it's the exact same burger. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I use that same example all the time. I, I say you might be able to get beer in McDonald's in Germany, um, but the fries are the fries and the burger is the burger. Yeah. That, that, that's correct. So if your business and people go to McDonald's, not because it's great food, but because they know what they're going to get. Right. And your business is the same. So if people show up and they know what they're going to get, they're going to be happy and they're going to come back. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. And then, and then I help them with time, uh, time management. Um, 
one of my programs is time disaster to time master. So you're not, and I don't see, you know, lots of people talk about having a balanced life. You know, I balance it between work and family. Um, to me, that means you're trading, right? I'm trading something over on the work side for something on the family side. Right. I don't think that's a good way to look at it. I see it more as blended in that um, if my daughter has horse riding lessons on a Wednesday afternoon, my business runs while I go to her riding lesson, right? It's not a trade. It's, it's worked in there. Right. And that's part of having the systems in place. So people can be, people can be booking appointments with me because I've got a system that does all of that without me being here. I don't right. have to answer the phone and say, Oh yeah. Thanks for calling Mary. Yeah. Do you have time next Wednesday at three? <laughs> right. They can book the time. Yeah. I, you know, that's a, that's a great example of a time saver because when I started going to a, a, a Calendly app and I know there's different types out there, um, I noticed that my stress level went down because yeah. I wasn't waiting for somebody to get back to me. Um, checking with their calendar, checking with their assistant who had to check with their dentist to check with whoever it's this daisy chain of everyone checking their calendars. And, uh, I just, you know, here, pick a time. Yeah. Here's, here's what I got available. Um, and that makes, and so to your point of how do they, people get a hold of me, my website, success hyphen innovations.com yeah. forward slash clarity. And that's the easiest. That's a direct link to my calendar. You can book a 30 minute call with me. And we'll get a little clarity for you in your business, right? Yeah. Where are you? What? Right. And especially now, what roadblocks are you facing? Right. Right. What's getting in your way? And sometimes it's just how you look at it. Right. Yeah. How, how should I look at it? How can I look at it differently? And often it's just another set of eyes. Right. Right. I don't know about you, but I, sometimes you work on something and you work on something and you work on something. And somebody comes in and goes, well, why didn't you do this? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. No, I, yeah, it's embarrassing when that happens. But I have to remind myself that um, sometimes we get too close to things. Yes. And sometimes people just have different experiences. It doesn't mean they're better, smarter or anything. They're just just their health their head is tilted just at the right angle at that right moment to see something that you're just not seeing uh, and that's you know I, I think back to an old rancher i know from ohio actually there you go. Still, <laughs> okay um, and he said to me once he says if you ever lend somebody twenty dollars and you never hear from them again consider it twenty dollars well spent that's great advice you know, my dad once told me that there's just somebody who was kind of annoying me in my life. He said, just lend them money. They'll go away. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah. That's good but advice. Darryl, like, and and he's, a, he's a prime example of taking something that most people see as a commodity. Mm -hmm. He's a Texas Longhorn rancher, huge ranch, I don't know, 5,000 odd cows on his place down there. And he makes really good money because he's a great marketer and he's a great representative of his business and of his, of his cattle breed. And he sells cattle all over the world because he loves what he does and he's put systems in place. Now, you know, since 1960, whatever it was when he started to now, <laughs> he's had a lot of learning, sure. but, you know, systems and processes in place and when it works it works and you just when that one when you know that works you keep doing it you repeat it yeah and that's a standard operating procedure that most business owners oh it worked that time but i'm going to try this instead right right it worked that time okay how can we make that a little bit better instead of reinventing the wheel every time we you know every new customer that comes in right well, Mark, I really appreciate your time. Mark Johnson with Success Innovations. Again, www.success-innovations.com. They want to get on your calendar forward slash clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely.
Thank you. Thank you, Rick. To wrap things up, remember, we're looking for some enterprising business types to join our team as franchisees of Amspirit Business Connections. Our franchisees work with entrepreneurs, sales representatives, and professionals in their area to help them become more successful through networking and the exchange of quality business referrals in a structured weekly morning meeting. This is a unique franchise opportunity, you see, because these meetings are in the morning. A successful business type or professional can add this franchise opportunity onto what they're already doing. Again, all of our franchisees do something else. For a couple hours in the morning, a few mornings a week, these franchisees work the Amspirit Business Connections model. The rest of the time, they're attorneys, accountants, realtors, coaches, and consultants of various kinds. The wonderful thing is that not only do our franchisees realize a financial gain from operating the Amspirit Business Connections model, but the business networks that they build and develop become a great source of referrals for their primary business as well. Perhaps you know someone, perhaps you are that someone. Whatever the case, to learn more about the Amspirit Business Connections franchise opportunity, please contact me using the email in the show notes or the one we provide at the end of this program. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.